Sir, just a moment, please. Just come this way, sir. No, but I, I really haven't got the time. Sir. It'll just take a moment. We need you. I, look, I, I just haven't got the time. What, what, what is it you want? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of experiment, an interview for television. I don't want to say too much about it right now. The point is to say as little as possible. Afterward, I'm going to ask you a question. So you'll help us? Well, I don't understand. Good. All you have to do is, is look at these photographs. That's Neville Chamberlain. No, no, not... don't talk now. Let's, let's just move along and look at the photographs.
are you, sir? I'm uh, a securities advisor. You have a name, I suppose. Tell me what you want. Well, look, you, you've had an experience. You, you've seen all these photographs. I just want you to tell me about them. Well, I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, photographs, of course. Uh, I recognize some of them, some of the people. Uh, well, uh, uh, something terrible has happened. Some, some of the people are well known. Um, well, there's, there seem to be um, inherent violence. Yes, violence. The photographs are in pairs, correct? Well, I can see that. What was missing? What was missing? Well, I don't know. OK, let me put it this way. Who was missing? I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Suppose I said that it is not about violence. I can't help you. Not about violence. I don't understand. Thank you very much for your assistance. Oh, you're quite welcome. Someone is missing, you say. Thanks very much. Oh, all right. All right. Bye. Bye. Oh, sir, would you tell me your name, please? Robert Harris. Uh, well, I know when this is going to be shown. Yes. Your address, please. Uh, Rushmore Company, right here in the building. What was the answer? I beg your pardon? The answer to that question he asked me. What was it? Oh. Wait for the program. No one knows yet. Coffee? You're late. I realize that. I apologize. Why? Because I'm sorry. Don't play word games with me, Mrs. Pelkey. You know, I was asking why you were late, not why you apologize. I can't tell you that, Mr. Harrison. It was a private matter? It was a private matter. Do you want coffee? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What'd you say? I said very well. I'm so sorry. Shall I sit down? You might as well, yes. What did uh, the old man want? Nothing. Just how nice my new dress is. What, uh, what week is this, Mrs. Pelton? Week of the 20th to the 24th. Today's Tuesday. Who are you, Mrs. Belton? 
Avec le poids. I'll be at my desk if you need me. The world is there, Robert. Don't wish it away. Please don't. Wishing it away is death. be a what? It's going to be a book. It's going to be a book. Right. How many words in the book? In a, in a movie. One, two, three, four, eight. eight. It's a story all by itself. Go on. <laughs> right. What is it going to be? Eight. She's being a gunman. She, you're being a gunman. See, intrigue. It's something like that, right? What word are you doing? S a spy. What word? Which word? What word is a spy? The spy who came in from the cold. I got <laughs> <Is> that right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a sergeant in the army. Okay. Pepper. Okay. What, Sergeant Pepper? Sergeant Pepper. Uh, I don't know the name of the rest of it. Uh, sergeant Pepper's uh, thing. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> What's a Sergeant <laughs> Pepper's <laughs> thing? Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I have to know how many words are on the title. What? How many? Come on. Two words in the title. Yeah. No, a man shoots a lady, right? Lady shoots a man. No, that isn't it. OK, go on. <laughs> Over your head. Number one, that's the first thing. All around the lady. She's all of her. All of her. All of her. All of her. All of her! Go on. Go on, yes. Of course. The fruit. You're doing the fruit. All of her fruit. No? <laughs> it's all of her twist. I knew it before you started. I hate you. I hate you. shown, dear? Uh, I'm not certain. They said they let me know. Are they going to pay you? Of course not. That's very exciting, dear. No, yeah, I suppose so. Frankly, it upset me. Why? I'm a private person, Michael. Remember Bob Ferguson? 
Bob who? Ferguson. Ferguson. Bob Ferguson. He replaced me in the States. Oh, yes, a sort of handsome young man. Lots of fun, always joking. Well, it's becoming quite obvious he's flirting with his secretary. That lovely man. Yes, that lovely man. Why shouldn't he have an affair with his secretary? I don't know. Did you take your pills, dear? Didn't you say that he was in the States? He's just a man at the office, dear. television people didn't stop you. It had a field day. Yeah. She's turned her aid down again. Got it. Yes? She wants her dessert. Will you take it up to her, please, dear? May I be excused? No. What's that book doing at the table? Some book of Michael's. He's reading it. Well, I'd imagine that, Myrna. What's it doing at the table? I don't know, dear. You know Michael and his books. Yeah. Henry Miller in the bedroom. Well, surely that's where Henry Miller belongs. Oh, it's mine. Did you speak? No, dear. Mrs. Beto's dog got shot this morning. My coffee! Oh! What, Mother? Well, there isn't any more. Oh, it's Arnold. Oh. Get out of the paper. I'm not through with it yet, Mother. Later. What is it? Huh? The end of the world. Mother wanted more coffee. There isn't any. I told her. Oh, What's on tonight? I'm just looking. No, it's not possible. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't realize. Don't see. Yeah. <laughs> Will you, for God's sake, get off that bloody phone? Contre chaque guerre, nous ferons la guerre et par là nous suivrons tes pas. Le temps de l'amour Étranger, nous avons fait nos chants Étranger, avec nos cœurs de sang Étranger qui va te remplacer Étranger Pour nous faire respirer Étranger Où est ce monde d'amour De fleurs et de troubadours Toi tu n'es plus Et en partant Tu nous laisses un monde à Qui ne vient pas, mais qui viendra et 
rappellera le temps de l'amour, le temps de l'amour, le temps de l'amour. Ah, these things are supposed to kill you. What did you say? These things are supposed to kill you. What things? These things. Then don't smoke them. It's very simple. You aren't going to be able to stop loving her, are you? It isn't bad. I'll always love something. I wouldn't expect not to. No, it isn't I? You miss your children? Yes. But not directly. I miss what I haven't done for them. Not what I have. I miss not knowing them. You know them now? They don't let you get very close, huh? I must say. You never, never really talk about them. Or Myrna. Myrna. Is she here with us? No. Are you going to let her divorce you or what? What's going to happen? Oh, I don't know. Do we have to talk about it? Of course we must. Sometime. You can't face that, can you? It always is. My bird needs watering. Well then, water him. You know I can't move. What are you talking about? If the house burned down, you'd move. I'm an old woman, Myrna. Don't be harsh. You're only 68. I'm going to tell Robert about this. What if my bird died? Say anything you like, Gladys. He knows I can't spend all day lugging things up and down stairs for you. Guy. What? Turn your radio off. What's the matter today? My bones ache. I can't hear you. My bones ache. Well, they'll only ache more if you go on lying there like that. What about school? What about it? 
Why aren't you there? I told you my bones ache. Yesterday your teeth ached, the day before you had stomach cramps. I did have. Oh, why can't she shut up? You must go to school, Guy. I'm sorry, but that's final. Your bones will ache, your teeth will ache, your head will ache every day until you end up aching yourself out of an education. So, get up, now. I'm late already, I can't go. I can't have a conversation with anyone under a blanket. Come on, son, get out of bed. I'll write a note for you and tell them I detained you. I'll do that much for you. But you must go. You should open your window at night. The room smells. Come on, son. Get up. For peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There, midnights all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always, night and day, I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. While I stand on the roadway, or on the pavement's gray, I hear it in the deep heart's core. Thank you, Maureen. That was thoughtfully prepared and beautifully read. Now, Guy, I believe you prepared a poem about a crow? Yes, I did. Would you read it, please? Mm. Poem for a dead crow. I shot a crow the other day. It would not die. It lay upon a rock above me and looked with one black eye hard at the sky. This crow I shot was dying by my wish. No, not my wish that he should die, exposed to death upon his rock, but dying, I had thought, for sport. I slew him with what? With wishes. I saw him turn his head so, looking up into heaven where no heaven was, droop, hardly a life left, yet incredibly alive and tenderly aloof to my intended majesty. I hadn't killed him, but had bereft him of his life. Excellent, Guy. Excellent. You sustained the mood very well. Yes, that's very important, class, to catch and sustain a mood. Mrs. Pelty, would you come in, please? I'd like you to take a letter. Bring your toast with you. What's on that toast, Mrs. Belty? Jam or marmalade? Honey. Oh. I always have marmalade. Yes? I cut myself shaving this morning. Oh. Yeah, right here. Well, that's terrible. Well, uh, finish your toast, Mrs. Belty. And listen to this. 
Yes, sir. I'm going to be on television. Huh? Yeah. Marvelous. Did they write and ask you? No, well, no. This uh, letter merely confirms it. How did he get in touch with you? They stopped me, you know, uh, in the concourse downstairs. Oh, yes. I felt... Um... But you forgot to tell me. Well, no, I, I just didn't think it was all that important, that's all. Why? Well, I was considering asking them not to use me. Why would you do that? Well, you see, it was very strange. They, uh, they had these pictures. Pictures, yes. What of? Well, something about war and violence and that sort of thing. And they wanted my opinion on these pictures. And you didn't know what to say? Yes, that's it. It was difficult to be exact. Yes. Membership has increased, that's the same. Mr. Ferguson seems to be getting on very well. Yes, it seems like it. I must admit, I want it. Well, anyway, I'd like you to take a letter to those television people. Bon, d'accord. I'll tell them I'm delighted. Are you ready, then? Yes. There's a letter and a telephone message for you, sir. Thank you. Here's your drink, dear. Drink your drink. Then she knows where we are. Yes. Why? Please try to understand. Something might happen to the children. Something might go wrong. Something has gone wrong. This was going to be us, Robert. You and me. Now it's not. I'm sorry. Oh, for Christ's sake, stop saying you're sorry! I am sorry. She has to know. Do you want to go back home, then? We're here, Robert. This is us. I only wish you hadn't brought your wife along, that's all. You're incredible. I mean to be. I won't open the letter. Just feel free. If I could pretend. 
don't have to pretend. You are free. Am I? Yes, you are. Now, Robert. Right now. At the time of the revolution, it doesn't matter because theoretically you have broad mass support. Yeah, but Norm, the public isn't stupid and they understand injustice and oppression when it's, when it's imposed on them. They understand a, a police state and, and they're, going to, uh, they're going to be with the popular sort the of The public movement. doesn't understand a police state. I disagree with you. Look at the United States. They don't realize, a lot of people don't realize that they're within a police state. Okay, but, you but know. No, well, like not right now, but this is why the Negroes and, and, and the civil rights people are forced to use um, violent methods to attain their, their, their ends. Like a, look but, at France. But, but they, look at the communists in France began a campaign of violence that stopped flat. I mean, there's a difference between, say, striking and occupying the factories and violence. The sort of violence which is going to stop a, a government backed by an army in its tracks. The Communist Party put the reins on on their supporters when they saw the thing looming very large, and they said, well, all what right, they do? we've Assassinate made... Assassinate De Gaulle? They, however, revolutions take their course. But the point is that it's a bad example of violence, France, because they didn't let go. They were, they, they were violent only in the, the, up, up to the very first and most elemental stage. You're advocating violence by a minority. Again. To overthrow the majority. Well, of course, right. that's your object. But well, it's, that's, 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 that, that's well, authoritarianism. Let's, let's worry about that, people. Let's worry about that problem when we get no, to let's it. Worry when, about when, now. when the state no, finally no, arrives no, where they are in control, then we'll worry about authority. No, no. It's like the that's people... Totally naive. No, it's that's like, not no, true it's at like all. Like the people, you have to know what kind of system you want to set up, Mike. But quite obvious. That's not true. Look at I mean, you know, you can't have the revolution and it's like, well, now we'll see. Uh, it's very difficult kind of to, we'll to, to make, to solve even a tiny problem. So let's solve the problems that are before us before we start worrying about, oh, what's going to happen once they But you're advocating but you a new revolution. But you have to decide what's going to happen. Nothing. But you're going to replace it with anarchy and you're going to replace it with entirely entirely true. totalitarian Wait a government. Words in my mouth. I never suggested okay, what, anarchy. Well, obviously, that will result, obviously. Give me an example of a major social change okay, but which has been brought about without violence in a short period of time. Look, Marilyn, how many Russian revolutions do you need before we have to stop My having God, this I argument? I really don't think you know what you're talking about when you talk about violence. I really don't think you have any definition of what violence is. You talk about violence for the Russian Revolution, you talk about violence for... What's wrong? Well, well. Hi there. Hi. Great, eh? What? Well, I don't know, the day, the weather, anything. Yeah, great. I saw you from the window and I thought you... Uh... Hey, where'd you get those sunglasses? Woolworths. Well, they look fine on you. A bit large, maybe, but okay. I don't give a damn what they look like. I only bought them to keep out the sun. What's wrong? What do you mean? You're not in school. No kidding. Are you sick? Do I look sick? Nope. Okay, then I'm not sick. Hey, uh, do we have to walk so fast? I'd like to talk to you. What in the name of God is the matter with you? Why aren't you in school? Why aren't you? Well, I came up here to say hello. What's the matter? Have they run out of things to teach you? Oh, I don't even know what the hell that means. Are you rested now? Can I get up and walk again? No. Oh, math, eh? Business, practice, modern, Poetry, oh, great stuff. I remember it well. I bet. Well, can I walk you anywhere? 
Do you want to come in and see the university? Why would I want to do that? Well, just to see what it's like. I know what it's like. I'm going now. Would it knock you out of your tree if I asked you where you're going? Oh, for Christ's sakes, I'm not going to tell on you. I don't give a damn in the first place whether you skip a morning of school or not. I, I, I used to do it myself all the time. But somebody's got to know where you are and what you're doing. Why? You can't just walk up and down the streets lugging your books, not doing anything. Put it into words, Guy. Try. You can't expect us to know what's going wrong unless you put it into words. You're all buggered up. What? You're all you're all buggered up, and you're trying to bugger me up too. Go join your loving, but leave me alone. Okay. Stay up late? I'm always up late. You know, if I didn't expect you to support me during the final years of college, I'd make you stop work. Oh, singing for a living may be very cool, but uh, everybody should be in bed by 10 o'clock. What are you doing? Getting ready for bed. What for? Well, it's something that men and women do together. An old, old story that's been going on for a long, long time. Mais pour qui tu me penses? Je trouve pas ça drôle du tout, moi. Wait a minute! What are you doing? Well, I always, always do in the morning is wake up. The next thing I always do is make myself a cup of coffee. The next thing is drink it. And then what? And then what? What? And then what do you always do? Then I always kick out my lovers, if they aren't careful. You'll catch cold. I guess you, uh, what you're trying to tell me is that uh, I shouldn't be here. Not really. Well, what are you trying to tell me? I'm not telling you anything. The hell with that! Michael? What? you never done this before. I'm not always here, you know. What the hell does that mean? And don't you know? Oh, stop asking stupid questions and tell me where the hell the cigarettes are. There. Shall I arrive tomorrow morning at your house, ring your bell, tell your mother to let me in, march upstairs and climb into bed with you? What if you have stomachache? Oh, go on. You know it's not the same thing. Do I? Will you tell me where the hell you've hidden the matches? In the kitchen. 
while you are there, since the cock is ready. Don't push me around, Diane. <laughs> Don't push me around, Diane. The coffee's not ready yet. The coffee isn't ready yet. Will you cut that out, for Christ's sake? You cut it out. Put your clothes on. Well, that's Hurry. a switch. So this is the happy ever after. For months, everybody's been yelling and screaming. Let's all go to the fights. So finally, I get tickets, and then what happens? Michael's off with that girl, what's her name, and guys playing basketball. Well, this is the last time I try to give anybody a surprise around here. God, you pay $15 practically for these tickets, and then everybody's off somewhere. Never mind, dear. You and I haven't been out in so long. It'll be fun to go alone. Goodbye, goddess. We're going now. When Guy comes in, will you tell him his supper is in the oven? What do you want, Father? Just to talk. Oh? What is it? Don't you like school? I just don't see the point of going. That's all. Why? Look where the hell it got you. I see. Robert? Don't you like the subjects being taught, is that it? No, that's not the point. Well, then what is the point? Whatever I'm being taught, I don't know why. Well, the why is up to you, son. 
not to someone else. It's just to give you a chance. I never thought an education was anything else but that. A chance to make a choice. What if you've already made the choice? Well, then you're lucky. Use your education to get what you want. But I can't believe that you really know what you want yet. You don't know what you want yet, either. Why'd you say that? I thought it was true. Guy, you're only 13. You don't understand. You just can't have everything you want. Life isn't like that. You make it sound great. What? You make it sound great. What is the matter with you? And where in the name of heaven did you pick up this, this attitude? You won't talk to anyone. You won't do anything. You run away. You're intolerably rude. Always bad-tempered. If someone steps in with a suggestion or a question, shows any concern for you, you bite the head off. Robert, I know you best. What is it? My bird. Damn your bird, I'm busy. Now listen. I've had enough of this. I want you off your behind and joining in. And take those damn glasses off. I'm your father, I have the right to look at your face. I've taken them off. Well, that's better. Father. What happened? When? When you went away and came back. Well, um, I went away to study uh, computer programming. You were supposed to be gone for three months. You were only gone for about a month and a half. Well, there were complications. Like what? Like age. I was too old, I guess, to... To learn something so new and so foreign to me, I... I wasn't suited. Uh-huh. And, um... Your mother needed me here. I see. I'm sorry, Guy. Some things you simply can't explain. I know. That's what they say in school. I gotta get that damn bird some water. Of course, you'll think this story is crazy. But it helped me to get through. I pretended. It was the only pretense in my whole life. Barring those kid stories when you pretend that something perfect happens to you. I had this lover. In my mind. Don't worry, he wasn't a perfect lover. He had problems. What did he look like? Jean-Paul Belmondo. Who else? So what was his problem? He was blind. He was blind because if he was blind, then he had to listen to me. That was one reason. Then if he was blind, he couldn't go away from me. He waited for me. And then if he was blind, I was forced to be concerned for him, beyond normal concern. I was forced to help him. I came home one afternoon and let myself in, poured myself a real stiff drink and sat down with it, with my eyes closed. I was very tense, excited. I saw things. There was a future. I can still feel myself sitting there and that particular tension. You know, when something opens up in front of you and it's right there to be taken, but there are consequences and you know that. You see them, and you have to weigh them. 
But you really, really want this thing. And so you're tense. And you try to calm down and think it right through to the very, very end. And I went on sitting there, settling any problem and accepting the situation. And he died. The only thing I ever pretended died. That was the day I fell in love with you, you see. You mean I killed him? He was ready to die. He died happy. You helped. We did it together, all three of us. Here's another letter concerning that course you took in the States. Well, that's peculiar. They keep sending you information after all this time. Better send it in to Mr. Ferguson. Anything else? It doesn't seem to be anything of importance. You want to go to your calendar now? Might as well. I think you've forgotten what day it is again. What makes you say that? It's your wedding anniversary, Mr. Harrison. No, Mrs. Peltier, I haven't forgotten about that. Mr. Harrison, we've been together for some years now. We only work together, and so we don't speak together as people. But I would like to say something to you. When my husband was killed, it happened, you might say, at the far end of a telephone. It was a hunting accident. My life ended what I knew of it. I don't know what happened to you in the States, but I do know that for whatever reason, you almost didn't come back to Montreal. And when you did come back, you were not the same person, the same man. I don't recognize you anymore. I don't know who you are. I wish I did. Mrs. Peltier. Yes. Tell me, what are you going to be doing this evening? You've misunderstood what I was saying, Mr. Harrison. Have I? Mr. Harrison, I already have what I need, not what I want, what I need. Please understand that. I'm sorry. I don't want your sympathy. It wasn't sympathy I offered you, Mr. Harrison. Is that all? Tomorrow? Yeah. Don't forget, your father's on television. He wants us all to be here to watch. Okay. I just hope to God he doesn't make a fool of himself. Michael. Where is he, anyway? 
aunt. Who with? I don't know who with. Probably someone from the office. It's none of your business. Eat, guy. Yes, eat, guy. So you'll grow up. Please don't start that, Michael. Please. He's just another dropout. Like father, like son. Didn't Dad finish school? That's not what Michael meant, Guy. Unfortunately. Guy, would you take Gladys her dessert, please? It's in the kitchen. Thanks, dear. Are you aware at all of what he's going through? I know what he's putting everybody else through, yes. Leave him alone. Father should talk to him. You should talk to him. What can I say? He hasn't any friends. I don't know what's happening to him. I'm practically frantic. Mother. What? How old are you? Sometimes it hurts. I don't resent your father. I don't. Nothing's wrong. Nothing. It's just that sometimes I wonder where everybody is. He is. Where you are. Where I am. Why we asked him to come back here. Did we have the right? What for? This? Except. Except what? Except we did have the right. Good God, we had to have the right. Sometimes, all three of you seem to be one person, one faltering person. You gonna stay here all night? Maybe. Well, it's your money, you paid for the room. I hope you don't mind, but probably I got a long night ahead of me. Help yourself. You? You're done laughing? Down where? Oh, here, of course. I've never seen you before. I'm from out of town. Oh, yes. Everyone comes from out of town. <laughs> Will you take on many more than that? Sometimes I say, to hell with it and go home. And Galen worry about the bills. Galen, who's that? My boyfriend. She is, you know. We share a place. You like that? Huh? <laughs> Holy ma! 
mother of God. <laughs> Do you think I look like him, no like <laughs> Galen says I look just like her. Galen says it's like sleeping with a movie star. Are you married? Yes. <laughs> you can always tell. How? What a man wants. What he'll do to get it. Or won't do. Galen and me are going to buy your house in Mexico. With a patio. A house in Mexico with a patio. Then Saturday nights, we can sit out. There's some things I always like about Saturday night on the patio. You want a budget too, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> when it's all over, everybody wants a budget. Well, that's it. I'm off. I think I'll go home. Did you pay me? Wait a minute. Ah, yeah, damn it. I thought I had you there. <laughs> See you. Just a moment, please. Robert. Robert! Robert, telephone. <laughs> telephone. Yes, this is Robert Harrison speaking. Put it through, please. Thank you. Hello, are you there? Yes. No, I can't. I won't. I'm not that man anymore.
Yes, I am. Forever. It'll take time to get ready. I'm sorry. Why? Oh, God. If only... Robert. If only is such a futile thing to say. It's such a stupid thing to say. Such a childish way to live. I only meant... Don't speak. Don't. They seem to be such unhappy birds. As if unhappiness were unavoidable. Isn't that silly? Because of course it isn't true. Is it, Robert? Guy? Mr. Green phoned. He said he was going to speak to the authorities unless I can convince you to go back tomorrow. Are you listening? I haven't told your father. I don't think there's any point. I'll help you if you'll let me. I don't know, really, what to say to you. This is supposed to be a conversation, Guy. Nothing can be said unless we're both talking. You know, perhaps parents shouldn't talk to their children the way I'm going to talk to you now. But I, I don't care about that kind of thing. Not anymore. You probably look at your father and me and say to yourself, there they are. As if we had willed ourselves 
to be what we are, to do the wrong that we do, make the mistakes that we make, argue, remain silent with each other and suffer. But if you think that, and I think that's part of what you are thinking, then you're wrong. Sometimes people are what they are because of some mistake or, or mischance. Or forgetfulness and ignorance. We were your age, too, once. I'm speaking to you like this because I want you to understand. I'm telling you this because you're a human being and because you're going to suffer whether you like the idea of it or not. It's there, it's reality, and you must learn to deal with it. I just want you to survive. Do you understand? Whatever's wrong with you or, or wrong for you, whether it's sex or, or school or an enemy or your father or me, I want you to be able to conquer it and get the hell on with life. Listen to me. Go back to school. Take from it what you can. But the world that you're going to be living in isn't going to be the same as our world. I know that. But whatever kind of world it is, you're going to have to live there or die.
This is so important to me, and I, I, I don't understand why you can't come. I must be yours. Bon point. But you were going to come yesterday. I can't help it if my pianist is sick. This demonstration is a hell of a lot more important than a, a, a pianist with a cold. I must rehearse with the replacement. Well, why do you have to be there? Why, why can't he just rehearse alone? Why do you have to go to your demonstration? Do you think the other is incapable of expressing themselves without you? Look, you know that I have to go. I'm one of the organizers. Don't smile at me like that, for Christ's sake! You're so damn superior today. You still haven't told me why you have to be there. For the very same reason that you have to be at your demonstration. I know. You're a pianist organizer. They can't function without you. Plink, plink. You're very stupid. Go on. You want me not to rehearse with this man. Instead, you want me to go with you and carry a stupid placard in a stupid parade of school children. You know it's not stupid, and you know they're not school children. I don't know that. I don't know that because of your behavior. Well, what the hell do you want? I don't want to carry posters anymore. It's not enough for me. Well, my God. It was enough for you before. Well, there are other ways of saying things, Michael. Of doing something. Like what? Well, like seeing songs. Like being myself. It seems so remote all of a sudden. So bloody aloof or something. I'm not. I'm only... different. I don't want to say goodbye. Are you saying goodbye? Are you? Je t'aime bien, Michel. But you think you love the old world. It is not enough to love everyone.
Yummy, yummy. Charlie. Mm. Goody, good. Charlie. Boom, 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 boom. Charlie. You get cramps swimming. Albert, the program's about to start. Yes. I see. Thank you. Attempted to cheat the government out of some of that tax money they keep taking. Any word? Have they found him? No. But they're looking. It's a very human temptation. It seems he's not the only child who's run away from home. Why are you talking like that? I haven't the slightest idea. It comes into my mind and I say it. But you know, there Did you take a pill? And it's very simple. No more pills, Just Mona. Quit smoking. What do you mean? Every pack you don't smoke. Did you run out? You robbed the government of 25 cents. If you want to put it that way, yes. Yeah. Don't be cryptic. There isn't time. All the time in the world. You frighten me. Do you play hard? Well, Good. Do you smoke hard? Tell me what to do. What a slave. What? Tell me what to do, please. I'm trying to understand. You want me to tell you what to do? Well, well, well. Good evening. This is Just Society. Well, I'm surrounded by this week's question. For those of you who watch the show every week know that it's our usual procedure to pick a question and ask for the answer. Sometimes we ask the man in the street. Sometimes we ask the experts and sometimes we ask both. It all depends on the question. But this week, the question posed the problem. What we wanted to know couldn't be said in a single sentence. We decided to pose this question in pictures. What do we see here? Neville Chamberlain, a piece of paper and a child. The great emancipator, a black man, and the black man's widow. A tank, a figure of desperate courage and an empty room. A genius with a child's grace in his eyes and a scene of pain and suffering. A dead woman lying in a deserted street and up here a furtive, almost sinister figure looking down from a window. A famous model being adored by cameras and a child with with empty hands, a marketplace, and a bird covered with oil. What does all this mean? What's the connection? Does Neville Chamberlain have anything to do with dead birds? Who is this woman lying murdered in the street? Robert? Whose child is this? Yours? Mine? Where does she live? Why does she live? Did this man know the answer? Do you? Is that the question? What is the question? Let me tell you. At first glance, it may not seem so, but between each and every one of these photographs, something is missing. Can you tell me what it is? That is our question. And here are some of the answers. You haven't shown the Great War or, or the 1920s or the depression. That's what's missing, what I went through. And uh, there's Twiggy. There is something that I wish I was missing. Do you think you could tell me, Charles, who's missing from this picture? Mommy and Daddy. I can tell you what's missing. Government. That's what. Control. Um, well, there's, there seem to be um, inherent violence. Yes, violence. What's missing, eh? Well, Erica, tell me what you see in the picture. That little boy looks like Charles. And that must be his mother. Those men are soldiers. I don't understand. I think this is what's missing. Someone crying. I think 
Between all these pictures, there should be someone crying. Is that right? I don't understand. Well, I think all of these things didn't need to happen. Is that right? So, what's missing is... You still don't know? People. People. You and me. Involved. I'm afraid I can't quite get the connection there, if there is one. Involvement is a word we all claim to understand. And most of us would claim that we are involved. But are we? If we are, all of us, then who's missing from these photographs? Not me. Is that what you're saying? The people. No one wants to be the people. Perhaps the people don't exist. Are we, in fact, so tragically uninvolved with life and one another that we do not know that we are the people? Asked who he was, this man said, I'm uh, a securities advisor. Oh, my God. You look very good, dear. What, not who? Can such people help not knowing that they are people? How can they be made aware that they are missing? Good night. What is it? What have you done? What is this? I broke my glass. It was empty. Oh. You're wanted on the telephone, Mr. Harrison. Are you there? I am. When my husband died. He didn't come back. What is it, dear? What's happening? <coughs> Nothing. Nothing is happening. Michael? Robert? What is it, Michael? Robert? Oh, Michael, wait. Robert! I do for you? I want you to come with me. Something has happened. Are you okay? You look funny. Please come with me. I have something to show you. Sir, we're here. Sir, 
Something terrible is happening in there. Something terrible. Robert? And I was thinking, I kept thinking, if I can just... Robert? Does someone here? Does someone here? Does someone here? Does someone? 